is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Spoil Me, covering Red Dwarf, Season 1, Episode 1, The End. In this episode, everyone is dead. Very unexpected twist at the end there. Did not see that coming. Not sure what to make of this now. Welcome to Spoil Me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let you do do the rest of the intro. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. So, uh, this episode was, I have had a couple people mention Red Dwarf to me. Really? Um, yeah. I, uh, did not know anything about it. This is not even a little bit what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that it was a fucking comedy with a laugh track. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. Caught me quite off guard. <laughs> um, I hadn't seen it. Probably over 20 years since the last time wow. I watched an episode. Okay. Um, yeah, I, it came for, out in 1988 was the first I, episode. Yeah, I watched it in the 90s um, back when Comedy Central just first started. It didn't have a lot of its own programming. It didn't really have any of its own programming. Mm-hmm. So they would show British sitcoms. So, Red Dwarf, The Young Ones, Mr. Bean, Black Adder, they would show on Comedy Central all the time. And that's where, that's where I, Mystery Science Theater, which mm-hmm. wasn't a British show, but it was, you know, from around that time. Right. And I haven't seen it since. And I had completely forgotten about that last part. Like, I just forgot that that was in this episode. <laughs> I forgot that that's where, like, I have a vague memory of that particular character, but I had forgotten where he comes from. Yeah, this show is bananas. <laughs> this is bananas. <laughs> that is the word of the day for this one. Um, and it's a short episode. Also, I should mention, I think this is the only thing I've ever been commissioned for that has been less than an hour or like 45 minutes. I think Veronica Mars are like 45 yeah. minutes. But this is not, it doesn't even quite rate a, ha- a full half hour because the credits are like you know a minute it felt like i texted you like it's gonna feel like forever long because when i was watching it i was like god how long is this fucking episode <laughs> that's what like was what you said it's gonna feel like forever long and i i didn't feel that way about it mm-hmm. but also i had no idea what this was so yeah. i was very engrossed because i was just like what are they okay so so I'm going to give an overview here. Okay. Um, there is a, there, we start off like meeting these two characters, Lister and Rimmer. Mm-hmm. And Rimmer is like a Percy Weasley uptight sort of, yes. you know? Yes. Um, and there really is no Harry Potter equivalent that I can think of for Lister, except for like maybe Mundungus Fletcher. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, Lister is who is Lister? He's got like the not take anything seriously, like the twins, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but he's also like what? What about Mundungus makes you think of? Just because he's like always like slovenly, um, you know. He just like doesn't shave. He's always wearing weird old mismatched clothes. <laughs> And I imagine him being like, you know, well, I'm I'm not going to spend my gold on deodorant and socks. I'm going to <laughs> just spend it on gambling because I have a dream. <laughs> Some weird nonsense. Um, but you're right. Like, other than that, he seems to be like he's sort of at one point it looks like Rimmer's going to cheat on a test. And he's sort of like, oh, you're cheating. Like. Which Mundungus mm. would have no problem with at all. Right, right. So uh, I'm not really sure where to put him in that yeah. regard. I liked it with the cheating thing. 
it's a judgment, but it's not like a moral judgment. Like, oh, you're cheating and that's so wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like you're trying to pretend like it's something other than cheating. Right. And, and we all know you're cheating. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, let's not try to call it something else. (laughs) Like, Like, I don't care that you're cheating. But don't you try to convince me you're doing something else. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So maybe he is more like one of the twins. Because they seem to be like that, you know, where they're like, oh, yeah, you you can pretend to throw up and skip class. I don't care about mm-hmm. that. But use our product, like, please. Like, come on. Right, like, <laughs> the twins were very comfortable with trying to cheat to get into the tournament. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So, like, that seemed like a good idea to them. And Lister think it's, thinks it's fine to have this cat, which is clearly a bad idea. Oh my <laughs> but, the, like, the stash just cat in the, in the air duct system or whatever it is he's got the cat hiding in. Yeah, because his boss later is like, it could get into the air vent. And I'm like, isn't it, it already sure there? Could. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, that is a risk. Oh, my God. Um, so yeah so this these two like when we first meet them they're doing their like sort of routine uh patrol together their maintenance of the ship and they are getting on each other's nerves lister is whistling and humming and just being you know really obnoxious really annoying um because this is like their chicken soup dispenser technicians right so <laughs> it's like of all the, I mean, it's very important job because it's the food, but it's also like such a low level assignment. It's, oh my God, mommy, I can't answer right now. <laughs> can I just, can I just segue for a second? Okay. You, ha- you have a mo- you have an iPhone. Yeah. So when I get calls, usually I can answer or mm-hmm. I can decline. Right. But when my mom calls me. It's like the phone knows it's my mom because I don't get a decline option. That shit is only slide to answer. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's That's the only, weird. It's, it's like the only call that does that. It's like the phone is like, bitch, you know your mama calling me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. I got to pay attention to that because I'm not sure I know. Like yeah. I've seen that. It's, it's the, and she's, as far as I can think of, she's the only one. And I don't know if I have her in my settings a certain way. Yeah, yeah, I'm wondering, because there are certain people that you can assign, even if you have Do Not Disturb on, mm-hmm. that if this person calls more than once, they can get through. Yeah, I, I know I have her set for that, so I don't know if... Maybe that's what it is. I don't know, but it cracks me up every time, because my phone is always like, mm <laughs> you don't have options here. <laughs> yeah, that's when it's double tap the power button, because then it sends it to voicemail the same Oh, way. I didn't know that. Yeah. My, my ass, I'll try to fucking double tap it and answer it by accident. And, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so yeah, Lister's being really annoying. And also Rimmer's being really annoying because everything that Lister does, he writes a report oh for God. it. Rimmer, Rimmer is the worst. Okay, first of all, his name is Rimmer. Yeah. Which, you know what? Yeah. We all know what's happening there. Yep. Um, yep. And it's not great. <laughs> it's a brown nosing joke, guys. It's a little bit, yeah. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's writing um, these like citations for every single infraction, mm-hmm. and we find out a little bit, like a couple of minutes into the episode, he's like got like over three thousand of these these citations. Yes, over from over the years, um, and he doesn't care. He's just going to keep writing them. Uh, ah. I love that they are interrupted by a superior officer. I don't know if you notice what Rimmer does here. Do you have the episode up on your computer? Are you like watching? I don't. I okay. don't. Rimmer sees this other officer, drops his clipboard on the floor, which does not feel like protocol to me, and then just goes and like... <laughs> wings his hand That's in a right. circle like That's four right. times before he like slams it into his forehead <laughs> it is the most bizarre fucking salute i've ever seen it's like on par with third rock from the sun the like slap and then slide oh forward thing that they do <laughs> um i forgot about that you're right oh but yeah God. it is a lot and it just you know gives you a real understanding of how he has like a respect for authority 
but doesn't understand authority. Like this guy, you filed 247 complaints against Lister. Uh, that's 123 counts of insulting a superior technician, 39 counts of dereliction of duty, 84 counts of general insubordination, and <laughs> one count of mutiny. <laughs> the, the mutiny one, his his explanation or reasoning for the mutiny one is so convoluted. Oh, it's like goodness. Lister did something that was wrong and that it could have jeopardized the safety of the entire mission. And therefore, it's mutiny. Yep. Which it's like, it took like seven steps to get there. <laughs> yeah. I stood on his toe oh maliciously God. and with intent to wound. <laughs> because it's like, you didn't just step on my whole toe. You said you stepped on my whole foot. Yep. Oh my God. Which, I mean, is that more difficult? Sure. Would I put it past Lister to do that by accident? Absolutely fucking not. Lister seems like somebody who can, who most often has things that never happen to other people happen to him. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So this guy is coming at him just basically like, are you fucking serious with this garbage? And I also really love the joke about how the chicken soup dispenser he like takes a sip to it's, test that it's, it's working. Terrible. And he like almost <laughs> spits it out and is like, "Yep, that's working." <laughs> Ew. I love too that Lister takes the cup when Rimmer's done, and he takes a sip and he spits it out, but he does finish it. He does mm-hmm. keep drinking it. <laughs> yep. And later on, he's like, when they're when he's con- they're talking to the superior officer, he's eating like what looks like a piece of chicken in. Like from a little tiny china plate, and I don't know where that came from. Did oh you my notice God, that? You're right. You're it's right. like really. Sm- it's like a little like what you would have for like sauce on the side, you know. That's right. But he's just chilling, eating it with his cigarette stuck in his ear, mm-hmm. sticking straight out. Have you ever <laughs> held a cigarette that way? Like I've tucked behind my ear. I have not like in my ear. Yeah, the in but, your ear while no. lit is the question no. for me. No, okay. God, no. I'm not a crazy person. <laughs> I mean, when you've got nowhere to put it down and you don't want to burn your hair off, I guess it's a smart idea. I guess. But again, as someone who was nervous about trying to double tap to end the call, I don't know mm. if I want to be sticking a lit cigarette in my ear. Yeah, fair. Um, can we talk about, now that I brought up burning off your hair, can we talk about Lister's hair? Listen, I what don't know. What is happening there? What? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's, um, you guys, it's real bad. Guys, it's like shaved on the sides and it's cut short on the top, but he's got like two long plaits down his back of like dreadlocks that are t- like plaited it's together. It's more than two. Like, no, not two on... strands. They're like two big things. But like, I, when I, cause I was watching him later and it looks like he's got like four. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to watch the thing now. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead a little bit to when he's got the cat in his arms because uh, when he is in uniform, it's sort of hidden. But when he's right. wandering around in their like little room together. Yeah, he's it, actually there's more than four. It looks like there's like six. Really? Okay. Yeah. But they're like all at the back of his head. Mm-hmm. Like a ponytail that he sh- like put it into a ponytail and then just had the barber shave the rest of his hair off yeah it's almost think- like uh an anakin skywalker thing uh, it's like a really bad mullet or like a really yeah. bad like rat tail mm-hmm. um so i just pulled up the uh wikipedia because i w- couldn't remember lister's name the actor's name do you know this shit is still on <laughs> oh yeah i when i was looking for an image for this I kept pulling images of them where they looked a lot older. I had no idea. I knew it had come back a couple times. Like, it was on, and then it ended in, like, 93. And I knew it came back in the late 90s. But mm-hmm. I didn't know it came back in the 2000s. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was... Uh, one of the images was, like, uh, pr- for the announcement of the premiere starting, like, last year or something. It wasn't last year, <laughs> but, you know... It was it was a lot sooner than I expected. Oh God, yeah. This um, this is a weird show, and people love this show. Um, 
I'm what I watched it this first episode and I was like <clears throat> I can't believe I came back for seconds of this <laughs> this <laughs> like for me I could totally understand being a huge like because they're willing to do really weird unexpected shit mm-hmm. so part of me is just wildly curious but also I don't like there's a certain part of me that I know the whole name of the show is Red Dwarf. So they're on this one ship mm-hmm. forever, mm-hmm. even though they're like uh, allegedly trying to get back to Earth. And that well, really like, brings up a lot of anxiety for me. <laughs> they're like three million miles away from home. Yeah. So they're like the fucking, um, which uh, you, know, you don't watch Star Trek, but one of the Star Trek franchises I guess it was maybe Voyager with Janeway. And that was what happened with them. Mm-hmm. They uh, go through some kind of weird time thing and they're like millions of miles from home and they're never going to get home. Oh, Linda um, says three million years. Yeah, they're three million th- years you. ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I'm trying to remember, like, obviously for the show, what happens is they must run into other life forms mm-hmm. while they're out there. And that's where shenanigans show up. Oh, hey, Krista. Hi. Oh, hi, hey, Krista. Yeah, I didn't even see you there. Sorry. Um, yeah. But uh, there's something about British comedies that I really love. Mm-hmm. Well, or, or I used to love. I don't really watch a lot of them anymore. Um, well, that's not true. I take that back because Netflix has introduced me to a ton of comedies that I really enjoy. But this particular comedy here is at a time when we were not doing stuff like this in America. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. 1988. Our top shows were probably like Cheers, Family Ties, um, Cosby Show. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just in such a different place. Yeah. Um, And we had a couple of weird comedies that tried to happen in the 80s, but we just were like, I don't know. We just, we weren't here for it. Like we had in the late 70s and early 80s, lots of fantastical shows like... um, the Bionic Woman, you know, and Wonder mm-hmm. Woman, and we had um, Greatest American Hero, um, you know, that were kind of like sci-fi and adventure. Right. But still tried to be grounded, you know? Like, even the Wonder Woman. Um, did you watch Wonder Woman? No. Or the Hulk? So, even though you had, like, Wonder Woman was a superhero, her her foes were actually just like regular bad guys. You know? Okay. There weren't like super villains that I she was battling. Saying. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. So we, we were in this place where we had TV shows that like, we have a little bit of fantasy, but we still tried to be very much like, but we're here in our world. Mm-hmm. And over there, in England, they were like, ah, fuck it. Let's just do whatever. <laughs> we don't, no rules. Let's do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what must have appealed to, like, you know, r- to writers about, like, writing in this setting. Because you can make anything happen. Because this is technology that you just say, it can do whatever you need it to do in that mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. There's no, like, I would imagine there's not a lot of worrying about continuity in a show like this. Unless right. it's for bringing back a joke, like, full circle right. at some right. point. Right, Um, I mean... We did, we're going to just jump around because this is like, you guys know, this was a pilot, you know, so there's not like a lot of meaty story to talk about because it's just, mm-hmm. it's all set up. When Cat first pops out, what did you think? I had no idea. <laughs> no idea. And like, honestly, when we find out who Cat is... Because I'm legit waiting for him to be like, get up, get on up. Like, you know, right. like, so the like, whole, like, look how he's dressed. <laughs> that's my question. Where did that shit come from? Because he's got a full suit with lace cuffs and fucking like a, oh my God, one of those little pocket squares, uh, shoes. It's like a jewelry Easter suit. If you were like a pimp. Mm-hmm. Who only goes to church once a year for Easter. 
So you're not hip to what everybody else is wearing. You're just like perpetually out of style. And he, and then the way he's moving, he does this little like scoop. Like he's, I can't wait for him to break out and dance. Like he's like one of the temptations or something. Yes. But it's, he's not. That's just how he moves. <laughs> like, I, uh, I was so, <laughs> I, I really was like, are they making a James Brown joke? Like I just kept waiting for something about like, and for him to literally break out into song, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, what's that? Oh, it's my shadow. <laughs> We're going to be a team. Come on, team. Like, and then he makes jokes like that. And I'm like, I have this all wrong. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this is. He pulls out a tiny hand mirror. Yes. Can we talk about that? It's yep. not fucking compact, fu- folks. No. It's a, it's a it's miniature a- handled princess mirror. Yep. Yep. Which must come from wherever Lister had the little tiny plate from. Like, maybe there's a whole set of miniatures somewhere <laughs> that exist on this ship. <laughs> and if that's the case, why? <laughs> Where did he get his whole fucking outfit, folks? Like- I love... They're trying to explain... Uh, Rimmer is trying to explain that... Uh, they evolved, right? Like humans mm-hmm. evolved from the, the primordial ooze. The whatever cat is, is like an evolutionary thing. Which, okay, fine for the the creature itself. But that does not explain where the suit came from. Nope. <laughs> and there's like literally no attempt to explain it either. The show is just like, we don't feel like that's important to talk about. Nope. That, that part is fine. <laughs> and you know what? I'm fine with it. Like, really? But I can't stop thinking about it. Like, I don't really want them to explain it. Not really. But also, I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> and I'm never going to stop making up headcanon about where it came from. He's got a fucking brooch on. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Did you see his shoes? Oh, no, I did not see his shoes. They're like, shoes like? They're like patent leather white. Oh, my God. They've got like a two-inch heel. Yes. Yes. When he goes scooting out the corridor. And, yeah. yep. It's so bizarre. It's, it's, and so do you think there are more cats? There's gotta be. There's gotta be I more mean, cats. You would think, right? Unless they all died. He killed them. They killed each other. I don't know. Like, I feel like there has to be. But when I think about it, when I was looking for an image for this, all the promo material just showed him. Mm. And there's like a block guy. Who was not introduced yet here? Oh that uh, God, that's right, and that that's like <laughs> all. So yeah, but the, and why does he walk that way? Cats don't walk that way. You know, you find out that he's like from a cat, and you're expecting them to be like, oh my, to God. walk like for it to be like an, a human imitation of what cats are like. Well, maybe nope. this is what cats would walk like if they were forced to walk on two hind legs all the time because does are a you trying to know- say like his balance is really off and he's- also does a cat know what to do with hands if a cat's not walking on his forearms then they're just like what in the way he doesn't know what to do with them i mean he knows to hold a mirror oh he knows God. how to point at his shadow but i mean like when he's walking i guess not because he's <laughs> kind of like this <laughs> exactly And me doing that looked like I was imitating a disabled person, and I did not care for that. Oh. It was a cat, guys. That's what that was. Please. No angry letters. I mean, because if he was going to walk on all fours, then he would have to have shoes on his... Right? Can you imagine if he had little white patent leather heels? He wouldn't have white patent leather... You know what he would have? It would be like white leather gloves with like a solid like piece in the middle of the palm. Oh, my I God. I bet. It would be like shoe gloves. Shoe gloves? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. The, the, the reveal of it. So, all right. We, we jumped ahead. We, we really I really did. just want to. What it comes down to is that Lister has a fucking cat that he snuck on this ship that is not supposed to be there. And he's so dumb that he takes a selfie 
of himself and the cat mm-hmm. and then sends it to the ship's photo processing center. Mm-hmm. So they know that he has the cat. Right, right. And they make him choose between handing it over. And apparently they're not just because the threat here is the cat might carry any kind of disease that could infect the entire ship. Mm-hmm. And he mentioned something about remember what happened with the rabbits Mm-hmm. And we could go fly. We could suddenly start flying backwards. Which I'm just, I just, what happened there? I need that story, please. There's the throwaway line before the cat reveal that the sensors are picking up some kind of life form on the ship. Right. That's, that's not supposed to be there. And then we later we find out about the cat. And um, I agree with you 100%. We should have heard more about the rabbits because I feel like mm-hmm. that was unfair to just throw that out there and then not yeah. follow up on that. What a fucking tease. But um, but then after seeing where this episode went, I'm like, well, maybe we didn't want to know about the rabbits. Maybe. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. There's, it's things like that. I need to, like, go back and continue watching Better Off Ted. Have you seen that show? Oh, my God. Just a couple of episodes. I don't think I watched it that much. It had one of my, like, favorite jokes ever, simply because jokes that double up on themselves are one of my favorite things that like mm-hmm. they sort of snowball and there is a show because the whole thing is that they work for a company that creates shit that should not exist that is so like evil or like so focused on productivity over the well-being of people and animals that it's like oh villainous and they try to create a chicken by splicing it with like a spider so that it would have eight legs instead of just two so they could have oh more chicken God. meat to sell <laughs> and there's like this and that's the initial joke is like well remember when we tried to make that eight-legged chicken and that did not work out so well and you got really <laughs> upset that one time when you saw it and she was like uh yeah i got upset because i got caught in its web oh god which like is such a like it takes that joke <laughs> just to the next place that's so fucking creepy and terrible and that's what I feel like would be the case with those rabbits if we found out about it, it'd be a joke that, like, that built on itself. And by the end, we're like, yeah, I hate all of this. You know what? You're right. Don't tell me. Right. I wish you had just stopped. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so terrible. Like, and and also, when they say, like, oh, this ship has detected a non-human life form, of course you fucking think it's an alien. You don't right. think it's a fucking cat. Exactly. Exactly. You know? I, f- I would expect the ship to be able to detect the difference Detail between, like, a cat, an Earth right? life like, form. Why, yeah. didn't, why didn't it just say, we detected a cat? <laughs> <laughs> like, are cats that unknown in, in whatever time this is supposed to be happening? Um, Do you know what I think? I think that this was 1988, and they didn't know how good technology was going to get that it would be able <laughs> so- to detect, like, something that specific. They didn't know that eventually it would be able to be like, this cat weighs 8.6 pounds and is approximately 42 inches from head to tail. Its name was Steve on Earth and its owners were Linda and Marcus Crosby. They live on, like, that's where we are now. But in 1988, they probably had no idea that right, that was right. coming. Oh, my God. The <laughs> other thing that happens is, um, so someone has died and there's this funeral. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really sad, you know, uh, and, they, and they take his ashes and shoot his ashes out into space. And there's a shot of Lister in their little, their bedroom, I guess. And he looks mm-hmm. out the window and he's like, oh, there goes George. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> and it's not really that funny, but for some reason it just cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> but then it turns out that, yes, he's dead, but he's still going to exist as this hologram yes um which you can tell he's a hologram because, because he got has this h on his forehead <laughs> <laughs> which is pure genius i have to say this for a show that wants to do space and tech stuff but not pay for it oh my god just having the actor wear a plastic h glued to his head is there absolute yep. unadulterated yep. brilliance from i them. give you ladies and gentlemen hologram <laughs> oh my god it's so good <laughs> so 
And they have a couple CGI moments where he like walks through oh, and puts his yeah, arm through. Yeah. But you it's know, pretty obviously bad. they just weren't interested in doing that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um and we don't even get that. Oh my god, how funny is it when the captain is introducing the hologram? I think his name is George. And he's reminding the crew not to be rude and like absolutely never walk through him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not even if you're in a hurry. <laughs> Which is really absurd, but also I feel like that would be a real thing, right? Mm hmm. Like it would be part of our social sort of uh, contract that you, it would be very rude to just walk through a hologram. Yep. Um, and it surprised me that in all the various sort of sci fi media I've consumed, I don't think it's ever been addressed. <laughs> like, right, no right. One, no one has ever been like, and by the way, you know, I mean, Harry Potter with the ghost might be the closest. True. Right? Yeah. And um, it's really only Moaning Myrtle who seems to get mad about that. Mm hmm. And, you know, she's so, like, weirdly reactionary about stuff that is the, not meant as an insult. The, that... At the time, I felt like she was being like, why, what do you care? <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like. 50 points if it goes through her head. <laughs> yep. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, um. So there's this whole other plot going where Rimmer is trying to take an exam to become an engineer and mm -hmm. like move up. And uh, he is like low key famous for panicking and not yeah. passing this test. Like he, I think one time he, he went in and he just like either wrote or said fish hundreds of times and then just, I am a out. fish. I am a fish. <laughs> I am a fish. <laughs> yup so he gets a little bit of um we can tell that he is everybody considers him a bit of a pain in the ass because when they're at lunch like Lister is sitting with some other people who we don't really get to meet mm -hmm. um and I think Rimmer may be sitting by himself or either uh, he's just not talking with whoever he's sitting with I can't remember I need to mention that one of the people that Lister is sitting with is Arthur Weasley <gasps> The one who's like thinks that the quarter is stuck on his head. Oh my God, is that really him? That's Arthur Weasley, a very young man. That is amazing. With no chin at all to speak of. That's Bless so him. amazing. <laughs> oh my God. And I was watching this whole episode late because there is like a, well, this is pretty dated too. This is old, but there's always like a group of av British actors who you just see like in everything. Right. Mm -hmm. They're like, they, they pop up in every show. So I was watching this episode looking specifically for anybody that I would recognize from something else, but I didn't see yeah. anyone. I didn't pick up that was him at all. Oh, he was so he young. Just, yeah. He looks very different without any sort of facial hair at all. And he just, he has such a weird face. Like his chin just seems to be like a tiny marble mm -hmm. on the way to his neck. It's very. <laughs> on the way to his neck. But you know what I mean? Like, if you've seen people like that, that it's like, there's nothing. It's just, mm -hmm. he's, he's all neck until you oh get to his God. nose. And then you're just like, oh, <laughs> oh, all right, there it is. But yeah, I think you're right that Rimmer's sitting alone. Oh um, my God. I was trying to check, but I can't find that spot. Uh, so he is um, wanting to pass this exam. And that's why he's writing like everything all over his body. And mm -hmm. then he realizes that everything he's written he hasn't given himself really any context to be able to, to use it. Like yeah. they're, they're just like just miscellaneous facts everywhere and nothing yep. that he can like be like, Oh, this is on my left wrist and Oh, check your right angle. So it's all useless. He's just yeah. covered in useless information. And then he shows up for his fucking exam. <sighs> my my like favorite that. part of this exam is him blowing on the page? Like he what? thinks there's going to be two pages <laughs> and they're just going to get <laughs> Because you know what? When you get into like a blind, illogical panic about shit, that's the kind of yep. stuff that your mind does, right? Yep. yep. Where you're just like, Listen. well, obviously, it's like waking up and you see the clock and, and your brain is all addled because you've been asleep. And the clock says very clearly... That it's 4.30. And your brain just is like, well, obviously my clock's wrong. It's time to get ready for work. <laughs> Have you ever had that? Well, I've had, like, I told you the story where um, where we got ripped off by my cousin. 
And I come into the apartment and she had stolen like the TV and VCR oh, and all kinds of shit, right. right? And I was, my brain just did not want to accept what it was seeing. So I went and I checked the bathroom and pulled the shower curtain back looking like for my- Like she piled all your yes! stuff in the yes! tub? <laughs> exactly like that. Like, <laughs> I really did. I went and was like, maybe everything's behind the shower curtain. Yeah. <laughs> Honest to God, true story. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> How weird would it have been if that's what she did? Like, what do you do? How, like, even if she didn't take it, you're definitely like, oh, you have to move out. I, like, say, I don't know like, what that was, but you're gone. If, if. That shit had really been in a bathtub. She would have had much bigger problems than her fucking addiction. She did. Yeah. She would have needed some very specialized intervention. <laughs> Yikes. Uh-huh. But, uh, but yeah, when he blows that paper, like he's like <laughs> expecting another page to open. Oh my God. It's so good. <laughs> so then he like shoves the, the sleeve of his jumpsuit back really hard and smears all the answers <laughs> that he has apparently written in like eyeliner on his forearm and doesn't know what to do and his hand is covered in ink mm. and he just smacks his hand onto the paper leaves a giant black handprint signs it with mm. his name mm-hmm. just so they're aware <laughs> and then gets up and faints dead away <laughs> And that is his test day. Yeah, this poor man. He's uh, not. He doesn't yeah. function well under pressure. Yeah. This is not a man that you want to promote. Yeah, this is this is a. Yeah, this is not a good day for him. This is not his finest hour. Mm. Um, where do we go from the test? Um, that's when we go to uh, Lister, who's been summoned to the oh, okay. captain's office, and the captain confronts him about the cat. Right and. Basically, and like I was like, well, you can just test the cat and see if it has diseases, and if it doesn't, it's fine. But it's not like not only is it getting into the air ducts like potentially a mechanical problem, but he's like, well, what will happen if I give you the cat? And he's like, well, we'll cut it up and do tests on its pieces. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. not motivating this man, <laughs> Captain. You don't tell him that's what you do to it. What I don't understand is he lets himself be put into stasis mm-hmm. in order to save the cat. Right. How does that work? What do you mean? So they put him in the stasis and clearly right. the cat survives because then we get cat later. That's so, my question was just like who's feeding the cat from then on. But so, yeah. so like they put it, they put Lister in stasis and then the, the captain is just like, well, I guess we're done here. <laughs> or, or do they go looking for the cat and they just are never successful? They never find it? I would guess that, which seems like if you can't find a cat on your ship, y'all just shouldn't have the ship. Like yeah. you just shouldn't be allowed to have this. But I do think that it's probably that. Like he's being punished by being put in stasis and all of the pay that he would have received if he were doing his job he doesn't get. Mm-hmm. So that's the main penalty because he's trying to save up to go to Fiji oh and get a God. farm. This, that whole conversation about Fiji with him and Rimmer. And he's like, you know, well, Fiji is three feet underwater. And he's like, well, three yeah. feet, you can wait that. <laughs> They'll wade. <laughs> and what about the sheep? Are you going to get them water wings? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> He's I also to- want to mention Lister's friggin' accent because whenever he says "sir," it's "sir." Oh my god! Yeah, it's like this, like ah sound. <laughs> um, oh my god! So yeah, Lister has this. His his dream is to retire to the island of Fiji and raise horses, sheep, and cats. I guess cow. He wants one. Well, he wants a cow. Sheep, that's right. One cow and to raise horses. That's right. yeah. Oh my god! It's and so there's specific. a girl that he has a crush on that he's planning on like taking with him that works oh. in like control. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> she was supposed to wear a white dress and ride the horses. <laughs> oh, okay. Sounds like, like a pretty good deal. I mean, his 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 um fantasy or goal or whatever is so specific. Mm-hmm. Um, 
who he wants them to be there with him, you know, only having one cow, only having one sheep. Um, but then a multitude of horses, apparently. Uh, a multitude. <laughs> it's just such a, I don't know, such a weird. And you know what else, too? This ship appears to be voluntary thing. Right. And in my memory, I, I re- misremembered. I thought it was like a, a prison ship. Oh, shit. But I guess I got that wrong. I don't, there's no indication. That's a that's very what, specific thing to think about this. Yeah. Um, but it's clear that's not what it is because there's talk of getting paid and being able to like take exams to move up. So right. I'm not sure why I had that idea in my head, but I totally did. I thought it was some kind of weird prison ship that gets lost. Well, maybe if you like kept watching, they don't, they clearly don't want to be there after a while. So maybe that's like the impression you get. Could be. It's just, they feel trapped because they're like, yeah, things aren't working the way they're supposed to. And I wonder if I miss, I'm, you know, confusing it with another, another show, which is mm. very possible. But yeah, watching it this time around, I was like, oh shit, no, they're, this, this is voluntary. <laughs> Um, so yeah, he gets put in stasis as punishment for not turning over the cat. And when he comes out of it again, everybody's missing and he doesn't understand the fucking computer whose name is Holly. Holly. Yeah. Um, is just saying over and over. Everybody's there, Dave. (laughs) Oh my God. (sighs) Please proceed to the drive room for debriefing. And he walks oh in and God. yeah, there's just piles of white dust. That he everybody. is eating all the way through this reveal. Just <sighs> sticking his finger in some unidentified substance and, and jamming it in his mouth with not nearly a care. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like he, like I'm just trying to figure it out by tasting it. Well, you're tasting every pile, and I don't know why you think every pile is going to taste different than the one that you just tasted a second ago. (laughs) But, yeah, everybody's dead, Dave, which I find it interesting that Hall calls everybody by their first name Mm -hmm. instead of calling him Lister. Um, Yeah. But, yeah. That is, like, a super famous thing, too, like, to say that everybody's dead, Dave, like, it pops up. In his reference, like all the cross, you know, pop culture and weird. I think it's okay. been sampled. Um, yeah, it's just one of those weird things that people like will you will just say and use. Everybody's dead, Dave. <laughs> He's wearing like the most amazing Hawaiian shirt. Oh my god, yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. Like, oh, I hate it so much. I'm looking now. There's actually a Facebook page called everybody's dead Dave. <laughs> that makes sense um so yeah he uh he's sitting there and then and he finds out like what happened was rimmer was supposed to have like repaired some plate and he doesn't do it properly right because he's trying to do it by himself yeah that's like he tries to blame it mm. on lister Like, the fact that you got put in stasis means that I couldn't do my job, which is kind of like, no, it's their job to reassign someone to you. That's the thing, right? Like, what happened here? (laughs) Like, they know that Dave is unavailable. Why is Wimmer still trying to do this job? Like, is solo? And is it his arrogance, which I think is, you know, that's a pretty good, yeah, you know, guess. Or did whoever they assign to replace Dave was so over Rimmer shit that he just walked out, which I think is also a pretty solid guess. <laughs> yeah. That's true, too. Um, so, yeah, I don't know exactly what happened, but Rimmer is basically like, it's your fault. If you hadn't got, done the thing with the cat and you hadn't gotten in trouble, then we would have been able to fix the plate and everybody would still be alive. Right. Yeah, so uh, he's there as a hologram now. Mm-hmm. And he can't pick up his clipboard to write a report oh my god he's so angry (laughs) which really like it doesn't make a lot of sense because if he were a hologram he'd have been walking around for like three million years himself Mm -hmm. as so he'd know by now that he couldn't pick up or like lean on anything or whatever but the conceit seems to be that because there was no other person on board the hologram did not appear until yes 
Lister was let out yeah. of stasis for yeah. some reason. And so. that's the thing, too. Like, uh, Holly tries to explain that it took this much time to decontaminate the ship from right. whatever the radiation was that killed everybody. Um, because then there's a line later where Holly is like, maybe I should have just left you alone. <laughs> like, why did I even bother waking right. you up? Which I think yeah. is a really good question. Like, why? <laughs> why yeah. did you wake him up? Um, and this is when we meet Kat. After he sees the uh, the hologram, they're like kind of exploring the ship, just sort of getting their bearings, I guess, on like what they're going to do now mm-hmm. and how they're going to try and get back to Earth. And then we see this impossible man <laughs> climb out of an air vent oh my God. and it's just he has these canines yes he does this whole thing is just baffling <laughs> and he like does this like wiggly like foot thing and and has his hands in front of him and he's wiggling his fingers <laughs> that each have like their own ring also <laughs> it's just the, it's oh. this introduction that i feel like Nothing will ever come close to Oh, it's unparalleled. Yeah. I just don't even know. (laughs) I'm looking better than nice. I'm looking dangerous. (laughs) And then shimmies around. His hair is in this like weird sort of of like. It's kind of like a pompadour. Yeah. It's like what I imagine like you could buy a wig of if you were. Like George Washington, because it's like that really low ponytail that they wore oh, in like the seventeen sixties. You, you know I what I mean? What you mean yeah. But they also did have like that sort of pompadour look that was sort of popular mm-hmm. then. Um, it's I wonder if it's his hair or if that's a wig or what's happening there. But there's definitely a bow clipped on it. Yes, there is. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Linda's saying in the chat that Rimmer is brought back as company for Lister to keep him from going insane. And Rimmer is who Lister had the most words with out of all the crew. So that's the one that they decide that the ship decides to, you know, bring back. Which is unfortunate because they had the most words, but they were very disagreeable words. (laughs) Yeah, that wasn't a good time. (laughs) But the ship didn't take that into consideration, I guess. Again, that's funny when you think about it. If you think that 1988 writers can't imagine technology that would be able to both distinguish who had the most talk, the most conversation with Lister, and also whose conversation he enjoyed the most. Like, right. it would have, would have been difficult for them to imagine it. There's a technology that could do that. Yeah. So, because yeah, if I, true. I mean, like, Facebook knows who I. Uh, communicate the most with and who I have the most interactions with and who I like the most you know but there's just no way for them to conceive of that so (laughs) like my whole thing is like thinking about the hologram on the ship as like Facebook or Twitter or social media in general you know come to life and that you're interacting with on a daily basis um, like what would your social media be saying to you about the way you live your life? <laughs> Listen, we, we don't need that. We don't need to get into that. I feel like it would have some disapproving things to say. The fucking, you know what, Facebook? I mean, Facebook is already a bit too bossy. It's trying Face- to make me do a fundraiser for my birthday. What is that about? <laughs> okay, can we just... Side tangent here. <laughs> Facebook cannot handle me posting about shit without inserting 12 other barely related, like, t- really not they're irrelevant. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, it's my birthday. Do you want to fundraise? No, it's my birthday. <laughs> Why? What are you talking about? We'll have them donate on your behalf. Listen. <laughs> and also, there's, like, not a great reputation with the organization that works with Facebook to collect those uh, oh, donations. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm just sort of, like, maybe just don't. Also, you you try and, like, post something. Do you want to post this to your story? Am I on fucking Instagram? No, I don't. <laughs> we shouldn't have those. That shouldn't be an option. Mm-hmm. Hide ad. Because it's repetitive. And literally 20 minutes later, I see that same fucking ad again. <laughs> All right. So you see the words birthday 
and your instinct is to advertise to me that I can do a fundraiser. But when I hide something for being repetitive, you can't figure out not to fucking Mm -hmm. show me that shit again. Mm -hmm. If I say something like, help this person out, did you want to start a (laughs) fundraiser? No, Facebook, I didn't. I just wanted people to read this and help somebody. Or maybe it's a link to their GoFundMe. Would you like to start a... They've got it covered. (laughs) It's fine. We don't need this. (laughs) Oh my god. I just and and then there's things that I like try to embrace like activity, watching blank. But then there's like 12 different pages of blank that you're trying to search for and some of them are official and some of them are yep. not. Mm-hmm. And then you pick one and no image comes up or it's an image that's got a big fucking spoiler yep. in yep. it because yep. they just decided to put somebody's coffin <laughs> with their body in it as their like banner image for whatever fucking reason. <sighs> like Netflix decided I'm I can tag a Netflix show but whatever is in the banner that will show for that will be whatever show they're the most excited yeah. about coming out on Netflix yeah. this month instead of it being for the show yep. I fucking pick I see that all the time people be like oh are you watching such and such and you'd be like no <laughs> and then you realize that mm. they've done it again <laughs> they've used your enthusiasm for one thing to advertise their own fucking thing <laughs> They are a bit of a rimmer. <laughs> it sounded really mean. I mean that both ways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, cat comes in. Um, whoa, crease has a tiny fucking little iron, iron. little itty bitty iron to get that crease out. <laughs> So somewhere, cats do we have those now? Do we have battery powered irons? We do not. Why don't we have those? I feel like that should definitely be a thing, and that we should definitely iron clothes while, while wearing we're wearing them. It's not dangerous <laughs> at all. I like too that the cats have, uh, or at least our cat has developed opposable thumbs in this yes. future. Um, mm-hmm. so that's cool. Yeah, that'll yeah. Work I out. guess like if you can get cats with like multiple thumbs on their paws that's a result of like inbreeding or something oh the polydactyls i don't remember yeah Mm. because the reason that like so many of hemingway's cats had those thumbs was because they were were on an island Mm -hmm. and all like interbreeded with each other um or interbred is breeded interbreeded interbred i think it's bred um but yeah the so i guess if you have like a bunch of opposable thumbs you can just have them like fused together from your extra thumbs that you get mm. as a cat from interbreeding. Because well, of scary. evolution, right? That's yeah. how it works. Yeah, Things I just think that's fused exactly together how it after works. a while. <laughs> I mean, that's what Darwin was going on and on about. <laughs> Wasn't his book called Too Many Thumbs? <laughs> <laughs> it should have been. That would have been more interesting. Um. So, yeah, we have uh, Rimmer trying to defend himself against Cat by karate chopping. And, of course, this does nothing because he is a hologram. And then uh, Lister gets a bunch of, like, cat food and pours a little milk on oh, it. And he's about to put it on the floor. <laughs> and he's like, what? I'm not Excuse me? savage. <laughs> and he puts it on the table and he puts his whole fucking face in the dish. <laughs> Now see, that should not be as funny as it was. <laughs> <laughs> it re- it shouldn't be, but you guys, I had tears in my eyes. I laughed so goddamn hard. It's so stupid, but I laughed so <laughs> fucking hard. <laughs> he then brushes his eyebrows out with a toothbrush. Where does he keep all of this stuff? <laughs> Where? Like... I mean, he's got like a coat with very many pockets, I guess. Like inside, there's, guess. Just, there's, there's irons, there's mirrors, there's a toothbrush, there's... Oh, oh my God. And- like, I really like his... Basically, it seems like what they did was like, well, what do cats do? They constantly groom themselves. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, how can we make that a weirdly, specifically mm-hmm. human thing? Mm-hmm. So I'm waiting for like dental floss. I'm waiting for <laughs> hairspray. But they picked real weird stuff. His eyebrows with a toothbrush. Mm-hmm. Ironing clothes that are on his body. <laughs> they went way further with it. 
Again, and I, I like it. Again, it was just like they, at the beginning of this, somebody just said, write whatever you want, guys. Mm-hmm. You know, make it as weird as you can make it. We are 100% here for it. And they were like, mm-hmm. all right, hold my beer. And it just, <laughs> they just fucking went for it. Hold my space beer. <laughs> It's gross. So this is when we get the fucking the story, or I guess the legend of Lister from the from Cat's oh, point I of view. About this, so <laughs> I love that all the names are just slightly off, and like he calls Lister something else, and the Lister has to be like, "Oh wait, no, that's me," and they have a different word for Fiji, um, but it's basically Lister is now a god in their mythology. Yes. And they worship him and there's there's like a, a myth that he will return one day. Cloister. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> it was a, a Frankenstein, I remember that stuff from Kitty School. The Holy Mother saved by Cloister the Stupid, <laughs> who was frozen in time and who gaveth of his life that we might live. How? It's not Cloister, it's me, it's Lister. It's Lister the stupid. <laughs> who shall returneth to lead us to Fushal, the promised land. It's Fiji. No, not Fushal, it's Fiji. And I will. I'll lead you there. That's where we're going. How Which, uh, amazing yeah. is that? Like, yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it ends with look out earth the slime's coming home <laughs> and that's where it just ends the episode with this um rimmer says something like can you imagine like he's saying them going to earth now they would be so behind the evolutionary eight ball that like no one would know what to make of them and he says something right. like it would be like the slime that humans originated from suddenly like showing up and knocking on your door like hey hi i'm the slime you come from Mm -hmm. so then that's where he's you know he's that great line oh my god this show is so fucking bananas (laughs) (laughs) yeah so uh so that is the end of uh the first episode the pilot episode of red dwarf i said that i didn't know how we could make an episode that we talked about a 30 minute show lasts for an hour. And yet here we are, <laughs> but here we are. I never should have doubted us. I don't know why yeah. I ever thought I argued with somebody violently on our own sober the other day because they alleged that we couldn't talk for an hour about Oreos. <laughs> Spoiler. We talked for an hour and a half about Oreos motherfuckers. <laughs> so yeah, I should have fucking known it would have been fine. I, um, I was ambivalent about this spoil me commission because I mm-hmm. hadn't seen it in so long. I couldn't really remember much. I had no idea where you were going to fall on this. Like, I <laughs> was like, she's either going to love it or she's going to hate it. And I just don't, I don't know what to think. I am so tickled yeah, when he chose I, this. I'm so tickled. Yeah. I really, because when it started and I realized it was a comedy with a laugh track and the whole thing, I was just like, yeah, I right. just, you know, and then I forget. When British shows use a laugh track, it has a way different feel Mm -hmm. than it does with American shows. And I don't know what that's about, but with American shows, the laugh track feels like, here it is. That's the part where, that was a joke, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like they're, like, trying to point at something and be like, isn't that funny? And British shows, it doesn't feel like that. It just, it feels like, maybe it's the laughing isn't as hard. Maybe it's more of a chuckle audience. There's also a thing that the British audience doesn't do that American audiences are like encouraged to do, which is to react to almost every single fucking line. Mm, Like every time somebody walks in a door, if it's your fave, you got to clap and hoot and holler for them. You got to do that thing. You know, there's just Mm -hmm. like the, for Americans, the laugh, the audience is like the fifth man, you know, they're a part of the show. Um, in ways I think Linda says away. it was a live audience. Um, oh, wow. She says, well, it is these these days, and I'm pretty sure it was then, too. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Because, yeah, that'll help. But that's the thing, too. Um, like, for American shows, they have live audiences, and they just have all that be- weird behavior that inserts them into the story that I really just don't like. No. It was really bad in the nineties too for all like the those weird <sighs> family sitcoms like Family Matters and 
uh, it got That's the one that we were talking about the other day. Yeah. <laughs> it got to be really bad on Seinfeld too. And they had to like actively discourage it. But there's like, did it? Mm-hmm, there's like peak huh. Seinfeld popularity. Every time Kramer would walk into the apartment, there'd be like five minutes of yelling and hooting and hollering and clapping. Goodness. And they really, and you'll notice if you get to like season six and seven, that, that tones way down. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So I started off kind of like side eyeing it and then I really grew to like it. And then everybody died. (laughs) And then there was a cat man. (laughs) And I was just kind of like, all right. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Why not? If you say, then it shall be. Well, um, I guess we're here now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thank you very much to Anonymous for commissioning yeah. this. We have one later today um, at four o'clock my time, five o'clock Eastern time, where Rashawn and I will be covering the first episode of Life on Mars, also a British show. So uh, I have not yet watched that. Have you watched it yet? Yeah, I watched them yesterday. Okay. So, um, yeah, guys, if you want to hang out again at four o'clock Central Time, five o'clock Eastern Time, be there or be somewhere else. (laughs) Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. Spoiled Network Podcast.